Hello and welcome to this first video of 2013. I can always have to think from what the year is. I don't know why. Um, but anyway, this is a extra special <coughs> locomotive. It's Helgen. And it's a Class 17 um, Clayton. A BR Type 1. So I got this for Christmas. Um, now, as with a lot of things, I've seen a lot of these on Hattons for a while, and then all of a sudden one day when I went to look for them, they'd gone, right? And that day was just when I was putting them on my Christmas list. So, um, my dad had to, he was saying that he took quite a bit of searching, and he ended up ordering it over the phone to this model shop, um, which he thought was, um, uh, like trying to steal his credit card or something like that, but thankfully it wasn't. There's our dearest model. And as per usual, you get a lovely little bit clip from Helgen. Um, a very nice description of it. Um, definitely read it through. It's worth watching how to take off the body so you can fit a decoder. Now, this is technically my first DCC fitted decoder uh, locomotive, but um, yeah, it got fit at the shop, so <laughs> I don't know if that really counts. Um, you also get a nice wee history and some. Description such as it's a class 17, made built by Clayton Electric, a Clayton Equipment Co. Um, introduced 1962. The last one was finally taken out of service in 1963. Um, these are BR Type 1s, so that means they're like the lowest type of mainline locomotive. So these were along with like the class 15s and well, the 20s most famously. Then above that you have type 2s with your sluzlers, that's not pronounced right but I can't say it, with your 26s, 27s, 31s and 33s, and above that you have your type 3s, which can include the 37s um, and the 40s, and then you, I, I'm making this up, well no I'm not, I'm pretty sure this is right, and then you have your type 4s, which are the likes of your 47s. Right, so anyway, here we go. So basically these were introduced... Um, into the Type 1 family because of complaints from drivers from running on single cabbed ones like the class 20s and their kind of classmates um, like you had your, your 18s, your 19s um, and basically when they were running those first there wasn't really a lot of visibility for the drivers so that's why this type of with the iconic single middle cab was introduced um, so along with it you get some nice different head codes so if you need to change the head codes or whatever, but I'm just going to keep it as it is for the moment until I really know what it is. So it comes in this nice um, iceberg, ice brick packaging, whatever you want to call it. Um, you get that, and then you get one of these nice fold-out things. Now Helgen, Helgen, Helgen's packaging is very nice. Um, it's one of my favourite packagings. So let's flip it out. You, get a, you don't get much detail because it's all fitted, which is really nice and useful because it's a bit of an effort fitting detail. Right, so you get snow plows and couplings, and as with a lot of these things, you really need to either choose snow plows or couplings. Um, now at the moment, I've only fitted one coupling to the rear of the locomotive, and the front is just left as it is. Now, your first impression when you look at this is, wow, one excellent excellent model and it's such an iconic, it's such an unusual shape with the really long bonnets in the front and the large central cab um, now um, I think, it, as I was saying, it looks it looks best in the BR green livery which is probably why this is the livery that's pretty much sold out now um, you can still get the BR blue livery although um, being, they were um, withdrawn from service in 1968 officially, um, and that and therefore they were pinned in blue, but they didn't receive tops numbers. Um, it has a D number on it, um, 8601, um, but it doesn't have a it doesn't have the, it doesn't have the letter D in front, which is weird. Um, I can confirm, although the camera really doesn't like looking at stuff close up, that you can see the the Clayton the Clayton builders plates here. You have a lovely British Railways logo, and you have your little information bit. 
which is all really, really clear to you if you're looking at it in real life, not through the camera, you can't really see it. The under frame detail is fantastic. You have your fuel tank, so I presume that's some kind of compressor. Uh, the bogey details, excellent, and of course, with all Helgen locomotives. The front, the detail on the front of it is, oh, it's amazing. You get, the, you get all the pipes fitted, you get the kind of the brake cables, and you even get the nice chain coupling, which is wonderful. Um, now, these were, all, all of them, pretty much, were based in the Scottish region, although some went to um, eastern and northeastern regions. Um, but that's the reason why I wanted it, because this is a nice Scottish locomotive. However, um, unlike most things that are Scottish, it doesn't work very well. Um, because, um, well, you know, this was what I said earlier about um, the central cab was because drivers were complaining about lack of visibility around those first and class 20s. Well, the drivers then complained about the lack of visitors visibility over the top tops of the front bonnets. Um, as you can imagine, at least with a class 20, if you're running one way, you can you have excellent visibility. However, if you're not, then you don't get any visibility. But facing this way, you can't really see the tracks in front of you. So that's that might be a problem if like there's a problem in the tracks or whatever. Um, which there shouldn't be, but you know, it's always good to have something like that. Um, yeah, also one of the other problems with it was that it kept having camshaft failures um, and fractured crankshafts, um, which wasn't very good. But, I love them. I think they're excellent. And Helgen really has captured them really well. Now, these things on here, they aren't meant to be handrails, and they have, and like, <laughs> which I thought at first. I was like, what if Helgen not bound to put on handrails? But these are in fact like rain gutters to stop the rain going down because there are tiny vents along in this bit which you can pick out and I just love this model so much. And now it is, it is really nice, wonderfully captured and all that, except when you look inside the cab. Let me show you how. Um, they have quite an ingenious way of getting into it and taking the body off. Um, now the cab itself is a separately applied piece, so you can kind of, it's clipped on at the side, so you can just lift it out, oh we've lost a pane of glass, <laughs> um, yes carefully lift it out, um, let me just put that back here, um, this is painted, this is in, it's in two tone green livery, so the cab, like the top of the cab is a lighter green. Oh. Oh, uh -huh. Right. I shall need to glue that window in later. Um, but it seems to be going. Right. This is what I mean about cab detail. Look at it. Okay. So now I, this is a complaint, but there's not much they can do about it. Um. Basically, under here, as you can see, is the motor. Um. Driving crank. Um. Fly for kind of a mechanism on each end. Um. Also, this is a convenient place to hide the decoder. Um, however, it does mean that there's no cab detail. I mean, look at they've made a nice. Uh, they've kind of they've made they've made do. Like there's kind of a there's a seat. However, the seat seems to be like extraordinarily long for like a really really fat driver. Um, and either that, or they just don't want them, or it will encourage them to slouch. And, and there's a nice effort on the control panel. But that's it, and it's really annoying because you can see it through the cab windows. Oh, that's my one complaint about this locomotive, is that. That's it. Apart from that, I really like it. Um, so let's go run out on the layout, shall we? Okay, so welcome back. Um, so here we have our, um, our class 17 that you just saw a second ago. Um, I've decided to put her on the tracks uh, at Beaker Station, just for the fun of it, um, and mostly because my East Coast HST is running in on the other line, so um, we're, we're having to share the tracks. Um, so let's take a look at our lights. First, yeah, she's fitted with a decoder, as I said earlier, so let's turn on our lights. Okay, so they're the real ones. 
No, they're pretty good actually. Um, they're not over. They're not ridiculously bright like some of the ones you get are. Um, but they're not ridiculously faint like the ones on the V V trains class thirty seven. Uh, let's see what our ah the head code head code does light up. Yes. Um, that's a bit disappointing. Um, as you can kind of see, it, it only is really the fur the middle two letters that are lit up. The other two, you can't really doesn't really get lit up that much, which is a bit of a shame. Um, so that's two things that are a bit of a shame about this locomotive. The lights there, and the cab detail. Oh well. Let's see how she runs, shall we? Let's... Okay. Very smooth. That's at 16 out of 126 steps. Not bad. Let's get her going down the line, shall we? That's quite nice, eh? Very smooth. Now, I will say I have ran her in. Um, Helgen recommends about 30 minutes each way, and I've done that already, so... But I must say, she was very smooth straight out of the box. Okay, so let's see how well she runs um, at very low speed, so let's up to one. Yeah, really, no locomotive really runs at, at one. Um, of on the 126 steps and the dynamics. Only the 26 appears to, and the HST. Um, two, three. This is her at six. At six, at five, sorry, she's just starting to move. Look at that, she's just ever so edging forward. It's, it's quite good. Not very smooth, it's a bit jarty though, but what can you expect for such slow? This is our at 9. Look, can you hear that? You might not be able to because the HST is banging about. I'll shut that down. Just listen. Now I know that doesn't, that's not, that doesn't sound anything like, well, I know this isn't a DCC sound locomotive, and that is the sound of the local the motor straining, but it does sound a bit like a diesel engine, doesn't it? So let's let's run her down the hill, shall we? Let's see how fast she goes. All right, that's her on full speed. That's that's her just slowed down. That's really not fast at all. Which is good because these locomotives didn't drive fast at all. But really, that is a Incredibly low full speed, top speed. I mean, I've just taken it down. I've just, I've just half the speed on the dynamics there, and well, over half the speed on the dynamics there, and there's been really no change in her speed whatsoever. It's a bit strange, eh? Okay, so I've taken the HST off the main track, and let's run her a bit, shall we? She handled, she handled that the the devil the devil set up quite well actually there. Oh, I'm terrible at changing points. I think I'm it's probably best that I never become a signalman. I always forget to change the points. Okay, so we're gonna again. I always apologise for the lack of light up here, and honestly, I assure you, it is just the camera. So we're going to connect her up to my heritage rake, which is in platform one at the moment, which consists of three Thompson carriages, two standard classes, and one brake. Um, and uh, they're from Backman, and this is a Hornby Gresley full brake. So, charging. Oh wow! Look at look! I kind of stopped her just just in time to cuff up. <laughs> yeah, but I still have to use the emergency stop in Banana, so that's not great, is it? Um, I apologise for the beep there. Um, yeah, I'll never, I'll never be, I should never be allowed to do live television. Um, yeah, so anyway, that's a Hornby Gresley full break and these Batman Tom I love the Toms and carriages, they're so nice. They're so unique, of their um, distinctive circular windows. And, and like the two, the two doors, like in the centre, like in a 170, modern unit type style as opposed to like what was the, the doors at the end like, 
It's quite innovative if you think about it. But anyway, we're not here. We have to, I've already talked about the Thomas and Carriages. We're here to talk about the Class 17 Clayton. <laughs> right, so let's pull her away. Now, oh dear, it isn't coupled. Oh, such a professional channel, eh, mine? There we go. Oh, no, it's still not coupled. Oh. It's because it's. What's wrong? What's going on? Ah! <laughs> oh no, this is the side with the coupling. I was going to say, I thought I'd maybe put it on the wrong side. Uh, what's going on here? Aha, uh -huh. now I, the coupling is kind of sagging a bit in this one. Um, and that's not very good if the couplings are allowed to sag. That's that's a very poor, poorly designed mechanism by Helgen. And had absolutely nothing to do with me crashing that end into buffers. But anyway, I mean, still, you're going to have, if it has a buffer collision, that shouldn't totally collapse the coupling and damage it, really. It should be a bit more robust than that. Um, Right, so anyway, now let's take it away, and I can tell you a bit about more about the Class 17. Because the main, one of the other disadvantages of it was, apart from the fact that the crankshafts and the camshafts kept failing slash shattering, was that it had no train heating supply, um, be that steam or electric. Um, obviously there's no space for a steam boiler, and I guess you didn't think about electric heat boilers. Um, they were mostly designed for the type of small country goods trains, which by the 1960s were being phased out as part of the reshaping of British railways. Um, I'm going to move the light around to be, make it more professional. Um, so therefore, they they couldn't manage the... This is a really shoddy video this, but never mind. They couldn't manage the big freight trains without working in pairs. Um, so that reduced what they could do, and also they couldn't, and also they were restricted to only pulling passenger trains in the summer because, of course, there's no train heating. And given that these were based in Scotland and the north of England, well, I mean, given that they were British local completely, um, they need train heating. I mean, even in summer, I'd still say you need a bit of train heating. So that really restricted what the class 17s could do, and that's that was one of the death knolls that rang for it. I'm a, which is a shame, because they're such distinctive locomotives. Anyway, let's get a few shots of her running around the layout, shall we? Have a fancy helicopter shot run on here, eh? I guess I'm just a bit bored as the usual. Stick the camera by the side of the track type shots. Anyway, she's a wonderful runner. Okay, so to sum up. Class 17 by Helgen. Yes, excellent, I would say. Very good. Apart from a few minor things, like the light at the front kind of like only showing up two numbers and while well, the cab is really annoying, but they couldn't have done anything to avoid that, so you can't complain. And I mean, such an unusual locomotive. I would highly recommend one. Uh, I love it. It's a great, it's a great addition to my fleet. It's my 1960s fleet, for which there's only one other local. But nevertheless, I love it. would highly recommend you go out and buy one. Anyway, thanks for watching.